Hello and welcome to the Albion Online Meta Tier List of July. I'm sure you have all seen the dev talk about Paths to Glory coming out soon, July 22nd. Personally, I'm looking forward to the journal. It seems cool and gives newer players a much needed sense of direction and content exploration which has been missing in the game. And for the veteran players, it gives some nice accomplishments slash achievements to work towards. We have seen some of the cool skins that have been implemented. The Mammoth skin, the first Mammoth skin ever. Pretty cool. Now, I personally would have liked more actual content being added, but this isn't bad either for sure. Now, for the balance changes, I was expecting major balance changes done in patch 5, which should have been just a few days ago, but it looks like all we got is a, a ZVZ hotfix. Uh, so the balance changes got delayed until Paths to Glory, which was just announced. By the way, make sure you check out the test server patch notes and the dev talk video if you haven't. Links are down there in the description below. And as for the video, as always, we will go over the solo content, go over Hellgates, and then end it with a top 10 most versatile weapons list. Links to everything can be found in the description. Just as last time, I am not including the crystal weapons in this video, but long story short, Rift Glaives are OP, Astral Staff is okay, and the Infinity Blade is trash then <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. Make sure to like and comment if you enjoy and subscribe for more Albion Online content. And without further ado, let's jump into the tier list. For the solo content, the most notable changes are probably the shapeshifter nerfs. The Q got nerfed, so Prowling drops a bunch, which also got nerfed. And Primal obviously drops as a result of the Primal nerfs and the Q nerfs. Uh, double baited as well with the cooldown change is now slightly weaker. Same with carving, got a damaged nerf, slightly weaker, but uh, still playable. Shapeshifter specifically, uh, if you check the test server patch notes, are also getting nerfed again with the distortion nerf. That's a 10% damage nerf. So again, shapeshifters will be even weaker in the future. So maybe not the best investment choice. They have been OP for a while now though, so it makes sense. Warbow got a buff not too long ago as well. Now, the only issue with Warbow is it's hard to kill through undead cape sometimes, and you rely on people chasing you, which is why it's hard to place it highly, in my opinion, in mists at least. Similarly to Light Crossbow, you have to be patient, especially against high mobility builds. You need to bait your enemies sometimes. As always, the meta is slightly different comparing mists to corrupteds. There are a few key reasons for that now the main ones are because of the terrain the traps and the bats while mists are slightly more focused on mobility and being able to escape like a 1v2 situation like that's probably your biggest worry especially if you're a good player running a gucci set uh, for corrupted grail seeker is still the sweaty meta option if you want to grind infamy very hard to lose any matchups and even if you do run up against a bad matchup you should be always able to break crystals without too much trouble. Uh, the only matchup which is kind of problematic for Grail Seeker is the one-handed spear with with the uh, Dusk Weaver helmet, and that might seem like a troll at first, but it is unironically a good counter to these kinds of builds where the sole purpose is to go in, do some damage, and then reset and repeat until you kill the other guy. That's the Rat Catcher build essentially, but other than that, nothing too crazy, no big changes there. Uh, only thing noticeable, I guess, Tomb Hammer also got a slight buff, so you'll probably see a little bit more of that in general. And one nice thing that got added for Mists, by the way, is the mount range change from 12 to 15 meters, which now makes it easier to farm in Mists, so you don't lose your mount when doing uh, PV, which is pretty cool. I know there's some mobs which... Uh, knock you far and you have more space to work with them doing pv so that's that's always good and now on to the hellgates we start with 2v2 hellgates the most notable change since last time is the carving nerf actually which we uh, saw earlier it drops it from viable to below average probably around c tier it's not that bad but a 10 percent damage nerf on a weapon which is essentially a burst DPS with the separate combo with the Robe of Purity, just kind of kills it. We do have some interesting changes coming up on the test server though. For example, Battle Axe will not be that good with the changes to it, but that's for the next patch. Uh, again, for 2v2s at least, it will probably drop a bunch. 
Prowling staff will also probably drop a bit in the coming patch. The Q nerf was noticeable for shapeshifters overall, but we'll see how the meta plays out with the next patch. Uh, but for now, not too many changes. The hell spawn still dominates, remains very strong. But uh, when it comes to healing, more people are leaning again towards one-handed holy. Uh, Iron root is good, but it's a lot harder to pull off. And even if you play perfectly, it's probably about equal to 100 holy in the current meta, so I definitely recommend holy. But if you are interested in playing Iron Root, uh, I recommend the video by Danny Memo. He made a 2v2 Iron Root guide not too long ago. Pretty good stuff there. If you're a beginner or even an intermediate player and you want to learn how to play Iron Root, I recommend that one. Some good stuff. And now onto the 5v5 Hellgates, the meta has not changed much actually as we still have the front to back as the best comp, but it is slightly weaker and got nerfed. Not only is the cleanse part gone and the damage is lower, but the cleanse not being there anymore makes one shot and THC dive more viable. But now also the shapeshifter queues deal less damage for all shapeshifters. So the zoo comp as we know with all shapeshifter weapons is nowhere near as effective still okay but not meta anymore at all uh, we also have a new one shot which is pretty effective that's the double rift glaive plus demonic deals pretty good damage now the issue is you can't really kill tanks because you're dealing physical damage with the rift glaives and especially if they bring sandwich swaps but you can easily snipe clothies from far and you can still kite pretty well THC dive though struggles to compete against the meta. I happen to think that there is a better option than the brawler gloves. I think either Heron Spear or even Rift Glaive makes the comp slightly better. But then again, the game plan is similar to one shot. You're trying to combo one tap a clothy. And for that reason, you might as well just play one shot instead. The front to back comp just has too much anti heal dots and tools to absorb a dive nowadays. But yeah, I personally think Heron Spear is the better choice, probably, especially with the buff coming, as we see on the test server. Uh, people currently opt to play Carrion over Primal for front to back since the nerfs, but that's not to say it's bad, it's just slightly worse than Carrion. You could still play Primal though. Some people play Light Color instead of the Curse as a ranged DPS, but ultimately I think Curse has more utility and probably stronger armor piercer is just a really strong ability and now on to the 10v10 hellgates the meta has had some slight changes to it especially with the hellfire nerves but basically you have carrion eagle and hellfire and you pick two of these three as your dps of choice carrion plus hellfire is the slightly more dive version eagle plus hellfire is more about comboing and playing around the hellfire and lastly, Carrion plus Eagle is the more standard brawl front to back type of comp. And everything else is just set in stone pretty much. You can't really swap much here in this comp. Greater Arcane just offers too much value compared to Evensong. Helps you reset if you need to as well, which is nice. Uh, Hammer and Heavy Mace are a no-brainer, probably the best tanks. For the healers though, you could run Wild Staff over Blight? I guess, but pro probably not. Uh, Primal, just too much value not to run at the moment, and Dawnsong and Ent are just staples in any front to back if you want to play 10v10s at the moment. Ent just offers too much utility, and then you have two DPS spots left, which, as I said, you just pick from Carry and Hellfire and Eagle, and that's the meta comp in a nutshell. For one shot, which has seen some play recently, with some success, I must say, it's very unclear what the best setup is. Obviously, abusing Rift Glaives is the way to go. Kite, 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 kite. We engage after. Three, two, one. Southwest, 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 southwest. What did we kill? What the fuck? Okay. Ent does not cleanse anymore, which benefits one shot, but. It's a rough time to be a one-shot enjoyer. I'm trying to cook something myself, but it's not easy. Kiting is just very, very hard against the front-to-back comp. They have too many tools to absorb and catch you. I'm trying to cook something up at the moment. Maybe watch out for a one-shot video sometime soon, but that's a big maybe.
And now we conclude with the top 10 most versatile weapons tier list. Once again, this is just a metric of how versatile the weapon is overall across multiple types of content. It comes to no surprise that Hallowfall remains as the supreme healing option, which you can go with almost anywhere and be very useful. Whatever content you can think of in the game, Hallowfall is either really good or at least decent or the best option, right? Now, second might be a little surprising. Actually, Lightcaller takes the number two spot and that's due to how incredibly strong it is, not only for PvE, but also for group PvP. It's just a very powerful range DPS and in smaller scale, you can run plate as soon as you get Dove, swap to Soldier Armor, for example, which is what people currently run in 10v10s. Just really solid across the board and the best PvE weapon probably there is at the moment. Mace and Light Crossbow, still there since a few months, nothing new. Primal remains flexible even after the nerfs due to how useful it is in group PvP. The Pierce duration got nerfed, so it will gradually drop in ranking, especially as Shapeshifter staffs overall get nerfed. I predict that it will become unplayable in solo content eventually and only be used in group content. It's already kind of heading that way though. People are dropping Primal in Mist and Corrupted, but we'll see. Bloodletter, Shadow Color, obviously strong and flexible. Arcane Staff, also decent as a tank slash support. Can fit a lot of roles, pretty flexible. Uh, Permafrost and Great Frost, also pretty flexible. Decent range DPS damage. And that pretty much concludes the meta tier list of July. I hope you enjoyed. I will update the list accordingly based on more feedback, as I always do after the video is live. So do check out the links in the description. Check out the community discord. I post giveaways and pings for content if you're interested. Let me know what you're most looking forward to with the new update and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a good one.